Hey everybody. Um, so for those of you that are not aware, my second kind of fun part-time job is that I'm a professor at the local university in the games program or arts and technology program. And I get to teach a course that's a senior level course where uh, the curriculum is all about using all of these creative disciplines in non-entertainment industries. So medical, aerospace, automotive, marketing, etc. I bring all of this up to say, I look at a lot of portfolios, uh, trying to help my students have the best shot at getting in front of the employer of their dreams and having something compelling to show. And something that I've noticed lately is that my students are showing me spectacular work and a lot of the overall design is very intriguing and the concepts are strong, but some of the, the fundamentals behind how to light a scene and how to properly set up lights in a 3D environment I think is an area that some folks could improve. So I wanted to take a minute to make this video to really talk through how lighting typically works, uh, a really easy recipe for success. And I figure for the sake of this video, instead of being in Unity or Maya, uh, which are software that I'm very comfortable in, I'm going to be inside of Photoshop because I truly believe that if you understand this well for 2D, it translates to 3D and vice versa. Um, but it's important that you have the foundational understandings in traditional painting and how light generally will create shadow or reflect or refract, etc. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to make a new layer and create just a circle so that we can at least talk about a 2D piece first, and then we'll, we'll get into making this look a bit more 3D in a minute. So from a top-down perspective, and let's say this camera is right here, and this is more or less what we're looking at. What I've noticed some students doing is trying to light it from here, or from here, or over here, and it just creates a, uh, a situation where you not only have a single light, that is lighting from one direction that's creating really harsh shadows and harsh fall off. But also if you're lighting it from the back, you're getting more of a silhouette of a, of a 3D piece when really you wanna be showing more of the curves and all of the, the hard work that you've done in sculpting or modeling out something in 3D. So the ideal state here is to use uh, what is usually referred to as three-point lighting. And within three-point lighting, you typically have, and these can be referred to as many different names, um, but I'm going to refer to them as a key, a fill, and a rim light. So what you typically want to do, and I want to point out that the key and the fill are relatively, as far as the sides that they're on, can always be interchanged, but typically you want a key light that is going to be something along these lines. So there's not I don't think an exact recipe, but this would be, let's just say my key. And typically this is about that amount of degrees of difference. And it's typically like a 70 to 80% intensity opacity tool. And the reason for this is that it's kind of coming from from the side, but not directly from the side and offset towards the camera enough that it's picking up a lot of really interesting shapes and figures. Then typically what you're going to want is something around here that is shining about like that. So let's say this is, and again, I, I'm making up numbers, so don't use this as a mathematical recipe, but let's say 1.5 X degrees. So a bit farther away from the camera, it doesn't really need to be from the side, but maybe it could be. Uh, and the key piece here is that this is making it so that you don't lose detail as soon as your key light falls off. So this is the light that's going to contribute a lot of the, the core lighting that's going to make sure that the rest of your object is lit beyond the key light. Um, so this one would be more in the 40 to 60% intensity range, something like that. And then we always have one at the back, not always, but usually in three point lighting, you should have one at the back. And this is typically just to highlight the, 
the silhouette of the object and get it off of your background and your backdrop um, so that it's easier to see your silhouette, your shapes, etc. And this one is typically between like 10 and 30% opacity or intensity, however you want to put it. So that's usually how this goes. If you want to use an example, um, let me make sure that I label these properly too. Um, what you might see would be something like the sun, the sky, and maybe like a reflection from the ocean. Something like that would be like a compelling, interesting piece of this. Um, so let's say if I wanted to do this, I could create a new layer and I'm just going to do this very quick and sloppy because we're about to get much further into what we want to do in just a bit here. Let's say I pull this way up here so that it's kind of sunlight colored and let's pick a brush that is a bit softer. Cool. And I'm going to turn on opacity on pressure. And let's say my sunlight is this. And I'd probably pull it a bit brighter and even paint brighter here. Pull it a bit brighter and even a bit brighter here. And then typically I will have, let's say the fill is the sky again. Something very, uh, very chill. Something a bit like that, maybe uh, even pull it under the layer on top of it. Um, so nothing too intense, but just making sure that the other side of the object is not falling into shadow. And then your rim light might be something really interesting from the back that typically has less fall off and is a bit sharper. And this might be the rim light coming from the back of the object. So all of this you're seeing from the front of the camera. And uh, let me go ahead and group all of this and turn it off so that we properly can show this in a 3D environment. Um, one last thing that I want to cover before I go too deep in the weeds in this 3D drawing is that there is one more fundamental beyond the three-point light, and that is that the way that lighting tends to work, and let me turn off the opacity part of this brush, is that if you have a plane that your ball is on here, and let's just make it in 3D a bit, something like this, where it's, uh, maybe we'll even do a table in the, in the example today. If this is all, let's just call it this really wild green, pull this underneath. An important thing to remember is that beyond all of the lights that are being contributed in the actual lighting of your scene, the bounce lighting coming off of this will absolutely be an important piece. So this comes in, it's off the ground and comes back up and will hit against this sphere. Um, so an imp important piece that you'll see us doing in just a bit here is that there will always be some amount of, of uh, green or whatever color is from the ground shining back up on your object. So. Remember that in addition to the three point lighting, this type of bounce light, this is way too intense, but you understand what I'm saying. Let's go ahead and dive into making this in 3D. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new sphere, um, or rather a new circle that we're going to turn into a sphere. Bring over to 50% gray-ish, and just light it just like that. Deselect, create a new layer, pull that layer underneath, and we'll say that this is going to be the, the table. So let me come over here and just do a rectangular selection, and then we'll fill this in with something that's mildly interesting. So we'll just say brown, that's fine. Okay. And now let's assume, uh, for the sake of argument, that this is a key light, so our camera is looking from this angle, we're going to say that our key light will be something coming from maybe this angle. So 
So the key light is going to hit from the far right over here. And then we'll say that the fill light is going to be more or less from this angle. And then we'll say that our rim light will be coming from the back, coming towards us. So that's the idea of the lighting that I want to be using. And make sure in all of these situations that you have this sorted out before you start trying to paint it's uh, absolutely critical. So more or less, that's kind of what I'm looking for for my light setup. So let's start with the key light. So our key light will be, let's just say it's something kind of warm like the sun. And typically, uh, one note that I do give students often is I see students using white light to light their environments. White light, as far as I'm concerned, is not a thing. Uh, there's highly manufactured bright white lights, but the idea is that light will almost always have a tint, uh, whether that be leaning amber or leaning cyan. Um, so I'm going to lean a bit towards the amber color wheel and come in here and just paint a little bit here. So I'm painting outside of the selection that I have, and it's giving me a really nice fall off halfway across here. I'm even going to come over a little bit and I'll call that good. And then let's say I push this a little bit higher and push it a little bit higher and a little bit more to get something like a highlight. So I'm just gonna put that there. Um, so what I did there was just put on a very, very bright white as the highlight from my key light that is a reflection off of the sphere. Great, so there's our key. Now, typically what you're going to do is use a fill. So all for the sake of this one, do a kind of medium blue fill. And I'm going to come in here and do something comparable. And typically with the fill, let's remember we go down to, let's say 80% here. With the fill, I want to now go down to like 50, 40, 30% maybe. So let's say we do 30%. I'm good with that. And then we want to bring in the rim light in the back. And that's usually the one that's just going to pull it off the background, as I mentioned. So let's say we have something uh, very bright blue that's shining off of the back here, or maybe it's even close to white. I could now come into the top here. do something like that and maybe I'll pull out my eraser and erase a bit farther up and this is the one that's usually around the 10% range 10 to 30 I think I mentioned so now what we want to do is create the bounce light bounce light again I'm going to come down and ensure that I've control clicked the thumbnail so that I'm painting inside of the sphere and this is the color that we are using so if I go back to my brush, I click that color. Um, I'll pull it a little bit closer to the color of light that I was casting as my key light. Maybe something a bit brighter like that. And then I'm going to come in and just do a quick pass underneath. And now the bounce light will come down as well. So let's say something like that is good enough for now. Uh, the next thing that we need is a shadow. So typically what you want to do with a shadow is grab the color of the surface that the shadow will be on, darken it just a bit, and then I will tend to come in here and let's see when we pull this under the sphere. So now I'm going to come back in erase out some of this stuff and you kind of want to keep that spherical shape if possible and make sure that it's casting again from the direction that we know that we want our light to be which our light was coming from here and even more so something like this so what I'd probably want to do is come back into this color and even make it come up a bit higher. So 
something like that, perhaps. And come in here and make sure that the color or the shadow is doing exactly what I want. So I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, it could definitely use some more work, but. Now I'm just going to control select that control shift I make sure that my shadow doesn't bleed onto the white. And I'm probably happy enough with that. I don't love it, but I don't hate it enough that I want to uh, dive too deep into it again. So let me commit that. And typically we have a bit of ambient occlusion, which usually means right underneath the object itself, there's a bit of shadow. And then I just want to round this out a little bit more. So what I might do is even shrink this just a little bit. Something like that. Come in with my eraser and just erase out the farthest edges of this so that the most extreme shadow is happening right next to the ball. And now we have something that's starting to look pretty 3D, but the idea is that we have it interestingly lit from one side, we have it filled with the other, we have the rim from the back, we have the bounce light coming from the bottom just a bit with a shadow that has a good fall off. And this is a relatively compelling image. So I'll leave the group with that. The, the idea is that this is to create something that's more interesting than having a light head on or a head facing away from you. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to dive into any of this further. Uh, and please forgive my rudimentary 2D painting skills, but hopefully you got something out of this that you can apply to your 3D scenes. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.